Hey everybody! The other day I went out collecting a bunch of plants from Pretty Boy Reservoir and I brought them home and I pretty much rinsed them off and put them right in my aquarium. And I've had a lot of people ask me about whether or not I should have quarantined them first. And the short answer is, yeah, probably. You know, if I was recommended to somebody else, if they would asked me what would I do, I would, you know, recommend to my viewers to go ahead and quarantine your plants. So in this video I want to talk about why I didn't and what risks I'm taking and why I decided that those risks are worth taking, etc. And then you can make what you want out of that. We may very well be seeing outbreaks of algae or some sort of parasites in some of my tanks. I don't know. I didn't quarantine these plants and I'm aware of that. It's a risk I was willing to take. And the reason it's a risk I was willing to take is partially based on experience, uh, partially based on a little bit of um, sort of impulsiveness, spur of the moment kind of thing. I wanted to shoot a video, I wanted to go out and have a fun time, collect some plants, bring them home, and put them in my tank. I didn't want to go out, collect some plants, and then bring them home and set up a quarantine tank for plants and do all that and wait several weeks and all that. This is something I just wanted to go do. And so I went and I did it, and I may pay a steep price for that. I don't think I will, though, and if I really thought I was going to pay a steep price for it, I obviously wouldn't have done it. Um, but the other thing I got to thinking about was, you know, what do I do when I quarantine plants? I know how to quarantine a fish and keep an eye on that. And there's some basic medications if I really wanted to just take some extra precautions. There's some simple stuff you can do. But with plants, I wouldn't know where to begin other than simply letting them establish in a different tank and then watching them and waiting and seeing if something. I don't know. I don't know what I'd be waiting to see. Did, does stuff start swimming around in the tank? Did something hatch out? I, I, I don't know. I just don't know what I'd be waiting to find out. I also consider the fact that fish parasites, and that's my main concern, will be a fish parasite. Fish parasites don't generally live on plants. They generally live on fish. That's why they're fish parasites, not plant parasites. They don't lay their eggs on plants that I know of. Again, not out of the question. They may but it just seems likely that part of that life cycle would have to do with the fish and fish waste and stuff like that. Uh, I do know that ick, uh, part of ick's life cycle will be to go out and settle at the bottom or if it settles on any kind of plants, um, it will attach there. And I could have brought home some uh, ick that will hatch out into my tank within the next few days. That's possible. But again, it's unlikely. When you look at the volume of water versus the number of fish out in the wild, uh, you know, you go out to Pretty Boy Reservoir and the, the fish concentration, a gallon of water per pound of fish will say, you know, a, a one guppy in a 55 gallon tank is more fish per volume of water than that reservoir holds, believe me. It's a big reservoir. There's a lot of room for parasites to be everywhere. So the chances of me picking up that one plant that had some stuff on there Again, not out of the question, but not very likely either. As far as the other stuff that might be on the plant, I've brought stuff home and later had little squidgly things swimming around in the tank or whatever. I've had, you know, mayflies or damselflies or something hatch out because of a uh, rock I brought home had larvae, crustaceans on the bottom, or, you know, they build those little sort of um, houses out of stone and then they hatch out. Uh, I've brought stuff like that home, but that's not a problem. I don't, you know, that's no big deal other than I got a little buzzing insect in the basement for a few days. And any other little squidgly stuff that breaks out and swims around in the tank usually results in nothing more than free fish food. You know, it's good stuff for the fish. So, out of all the years I've been doing stuff with the tanks and everything, um, I used to do all this stuff outside. I used to always go outside for, for Butterbean's first two years of life, all the snails he ate. Uh, well, maybe not all of them, but the vast majority, 95% of the snails butter bean ate, uh, at least during the warmer months of the year, came from across the street. I'd go out every couple of days and I'd collect up snails and bring snails back, and that's what he got, you know, for dinner. I'd bring rocks home, I'd give them a good rinse, I'd put them in tanks, I've brought countless pieces of wood home over the years, I've put plants in the tanks before, I've done all that stuff. And I've never really had a problem with anything. The only time I really had an issue with bringing something home was fish, not plants or rocks or wood or anything, but actual fish. And I had a columnaris outbreak in the tank that I put the fish in. It uh, was my native tank at the time. I now call it my new world tank for my newer viewers. And 
Come to find out, as many times as you'll hear about something that always lives in your tank but is waiting for the right conditions to break out and, and attack your fish, most of the time that's not true. That's not how whatever you just got told about works. In the case of columnaris, that is how it works. We probably mostly have columnaris in our tanks. It's a very common bacteria, and it normally stays in check. It normally doesn't grow out of control. Our fish don't get affected by it. And then if they're under high stress, their immune system is compromised, they've got a, um, a primary infection, they can get a secondary infection of this columnaris. And I basically set up the perfect storm by bringing home sick fish, they were, you know, the fish I put in the tank were all darting and dashing around and they got scraped up and scratched and injured. They were all stressed out by bigger fish in the tank. And as a result, this columnaris spread throughout the tank and I lost a lot of the minnows that I brought home from the stream. And, you know, that's it. That's the main, that's the, the, the problem I've had over the years with bringing stuff home from the stream. Now, what I probably brought home was algae, you know. The, the, the idea that I would have brought plants home from uh, an environment like that that don't have algae growing on them is minimal. It's absurd. It, it's, uh, you know, I brought algae home. There's no, no question about that. But where I collected those plants from, if you watch the video, it was shallow, clear water, and full sun all day. If it had some kind of algae on there that was going to be some really aggressive, invasive algae or cyanobacteria or something like that, it would have been growing in the environment we saw it in. Plenty of nutrients, plenty of sunshine, nice warm water. That water was like bath water uh, back in that little cove we were in. Uh, literally, it's up in the upper 80s, low 90s. It's really, really warm water back there. And if, I, if there was going to be stuff like that growing on it, it would have been there. Me bringing that home and putting it in my tanks is probably not going to cause an explosion of algae because it's going to have its light reduced dramatically. And unless it was getting too much sun, and I don't know of any algae that ever gets too much sun, you know, again, just not really worried about that. So if you take all that into consideration and you take into consideration the fact that I don't really have a viable uh, plant-oriented quarantine tank, my quarantine tank at the moment doesn't even have a light on it, I would have to like put a new bulb in it and everything else, plus it's a little 10-gallon tank, I would have to set up a tub outside probably. Just not interested in doing all that stuff. I'm willing to take the chances on possibly bringing home some something. Again, I don't. I just don't really know what I might be bringing home that could be that much of a threat that would be living on a plant and then attack my fish. Again, not out of the question. I do, you know, as I mentioned about ick, there could be other stuff out there that in its egg cycle, you know, the eggs get dispersed and maybe if some of them settle on leaves of plants or something, I may have brought them home. But again, I just don't know what that would be other than ick. And if it is ick, that's ick's no big deal. Just treat it for ick and it's gone. If uh, epistylus breaks out, I now know the difference between ick and epistylus. If it's epistylus, that's no big deal. Just as long as I know what I'm treating, I just treat for it and it's cleared up. So I'm just not really worried about this risk I took. I'm aware of it. I'm not going to recommend anybody else do this. I am going to let you know that, you know, stay tuned. We might be seeing some you know, catastrophes in one of my tank over the next few weeks, but I just don't think I'm going to. I'm really not that concerned about it. So that's about all I can say, all I can think of. Um, I will add, for anybody that's still watching, I did not wind up doing a second version of my going out and looking for plants video. All it really would have amounted to was just a lot of paddling around and not finding plants. It was more of an outdoorsy adventure kind of video than plant collecting, and that's why I cut all that stuff out of there. But I did intend to make a nice, long, outdoorsy kind of video out of it, and I just realized why use that footage. We can go and do another outdoorsy video anytime I want. So for anybody that wants to see another kayak video and just be out there messing around, looking at scenery, poking around, looking at pieces of woodwork or rocks or whatever, you know, just let me know down in the comment section. I always enjoy doing them, but I want to make sure that people are going to enjoy watching them before I put the time and effort into doing all that. So again, you know, hit me up in the comment section down below. So thanks for watching this one. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what I just said about, you know, the quarantining the plants and all that stuff. Did I miss something? Am I on the wrong track? here is there something obviously I should have been pointing out that I'm just completely off base here you know let me know I'd, I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts about that but that's where I stand on it and that's why I didn't bother to uh, quarantine the plants if you were wondering so thanks for watching make sure you subscribe you don't want to miss the potential disaster that's coming up you never know what it's going to be with me so thanks again and I'll see you real soon in the next one